Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speak, Film, and Enter, a podcast where we review and rank movies. I'm Nate. And I'm Adam. And today we've got the September roundup for you, Sans Dylan, who been a little busy lately, but he should be back shortly for a few episodes we got coming up. Adam had to get has to get his lights in order. When you have new things, you want to use them and you want to display right. them to your audience if they For do sure. even watch us on YouTube and not just listen to us. But uh, right. if you do see us on YouTube, you get the added blue glow I've added today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so nice work. Yeah, <laughs> production's moving up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, really quick, uh, for those of us who are listening to or watching us or just joining us for the roundup for the first time, you know, we review new movies for the most part on this show with the occasional older movie, but we also watch a lot of other things that we don't review. And this is kind of the place that we've designated to talk about those things. We're going to go through four different categories. It's going to be best new watch, best rewatch dud of the month and then anything miscellaneous that maybe doesn't fit into one of those categories that we just want to talk about so kind of be going over the other things that we watched maybe some old classic that we watched for the first time that we loved or an old classic we watched the first time that we hated or (laughs) something we rewatched for the first time in years that we wanted to talk about because our opinions have changed all that kind of stuff so Before we dive into that, I do just want to really quickly, if I can pull up the list here really fast, um, just go through some of the episodes we released in the last month, because we did have a little bit of a strange month where we had some scheduling conflicts and some Mm -hmm. technical difficulties. So we had about a 10 day gap there where we didn't release anything, which was not on purpose. But, you know, it is is what it is. Uh, The beginning of the month, we started off. We released our September, our recommendations for the month of September. That's when we go around and re- recommend six movies that are on streaming at that time for people to go check out. So it's 15 minutes long. So if you're looking for some quick recommendations outside of just listening to what we have to say on the roundup, you can always go check out the recommendations episodes for those. And we did review a few movies. We reviewed Breaking with John Boyega. And then more recently, The Woman King, Pearl, and Don't Worry Darling. That's a spoiler review for Don't Worry, Darling, with all its crazy drama and kind of weird ending. So (laughs) got into all those three movies, so you can go check those out. And then we also did our, I don't, did we do this before? We did a draft once before of like Oscar winners, I think. But uh, I think we did. We had a guest, one of our friends joined us, and we did a sports movie draft. We were in around the room and had six rounds, and we each drafted six sports movies. And that was really fun. So you, I would highly recommend everybody go check that out. We that had a lot, a lot of fun, fun with that episode. And with that kind of housekeeping stuff out of the way, we can dive right into best new watch for the month yeah. of September. So I was going to comment too. It's funny. Like we go back over and say like, here's what our categories are. And I, I've been doing this for what, two months now. Oh, sorry. I forgot to put that up. Uh, I've been fine. doing this for, I said two months, two years is ish. We've been doing the whole podcast for what, three or two and a half, something like that. About three three um and i always have to look back in my notes to figure out what the categories are (laughs) every month um i also don't watch as much typically as you guys do so unfortunately this month i didn't get to a lot so i'm gonna have some repeats of stuff we actually talked about or or reviewed but that's not to say that there's they're not good movies or they're not things that you should go check out or um or or get to um so with that said do you want me to start with uh best new watch yeah go? go for it Okay, um, my best new watch this this month was uh, the Woman King. Um, nice. I, I went I went and saw that in theaters. My girlfriend, um, we were kind of looking forward to this. I know we've talked about this on our episode of it, but we, that was one of our um, episode or that was one of our movies uh, that was on our list of the most anticipated the second half of the year for various things. Um, Viola Davis being in a in a lead role. The, um, it being an all black cast or all people of color, um, mainly female led, uh, all that kind of stuff. Actually, John Boyega makes a, a, an appearance um, as he did in, in Breaking. He's the main character in Breaking. Um, but I, I ended up really liking it. And I think the, the biggest thing that drives me to this movie, uh, and it, please go watch our episode on it. But the biggest thing that drives me to this movie is the, the not the storyline, um, the, the message of this movie and what it's trying to say. And I think that that is an important message for America or for you, for people individually. 
Uh, I just really, it really resonated with me. And I like uh, seeing movies that, that do that sort of thing. And they're not, they're not preaching to you, but they're like, Hey, we can do things better. And that's, yeah. that's what I like to see. So that's why that really stuck out. I'm, I, you, please go listen to our episode where I talk about what actually I, what the specific uh, things in that movie I enjoyed. But right now I want to talk, talk about the message and, and that's what I really got out of it and really liked. Yeah, definitely. We both like that one to varying degrees, but yeah, that one, that was one of our, uh, audio or uh, video issues episodes so you can <laughs> only was. find that one on the podcast unfortunately yeah but uh yeah well luckily we only had two of those and that seems to be out of the way at this point uh was that the only one mm -hmm. okay yeah it was so for me uh i watch gonna go in a completely different direction here mine is a parisian movie from 1986 and that is a movie called the green ray which is directed by eric Rahmer. Um, kind okay. of a very like it was the first Romer movie I'd ever I had ever seen, sort of a very minimalist uh his style, very minimalist style director, uh in like the 70s, 80s, 90s. And the Green Ray, I believe, is his highest rated movie on Letterboxd, or at least one of the highest. And okay. it's a very simple story, not a lot of plot. Um, it's just a lonely Parisian woman comes to terms with her isolation and anxieties during a long summer vacation. And it's kind of a sort of post college a little bit, or maybe she might be about 30 where she can't really find anybody to go on the trip she wanted to go on. So she has this long summer break and she just kind of tries all these different little like solo vacations or like joins one of her friends with like her friend's family mm -hmm. at some house out in the countryside or like in the mountains or something and she kind of just goes to all these different places and just never fits in anywhere <laughs> and watching it you can tell that she could fit in like these aren't mean people that she's sitting with all the time yeah. she just doesn't feel right and it feels yeah. off for her and i think a lot like a lot of people have felt that and some people to larger extents than others um i felt this movie quite a bit where like i've had panic attacks in crowded rooms before and just seeing a movie that was so intelligently and clearly able to articulate that feeling of loneliness in a crowded room mm -hmm. and just reaching a point where you want to be anywhere but where you are even though you're incredibly lonely and you're surrounded by people that are trying to be nice to you it's just not yeah. clicking in some way and it's making you very uncomfortable and it's it's just a really really smart movie and i connected with it a lot i gave it four out of five stars i had generally a pretty bad movie watching month i gave a lot of twos and two and a halfs and like Ooh. threes and there was a one in there somewhere and this was the only four that i gave for anything i had watched for the first time uh, i watched this on criterion if you happen to have that you can check it out there if not i think that's basically the only place it's available right now it might be available to rent in nope basically just criterion that's about it <laughs> see i can look it up real fast but it looks i did just it. look it up on just watched and that's the only okay. place they have it so that was the green ray again in case you're interested in going and checking that one out okay do you have any others no that was it that's like All i right. said i had one this was my only new watch that even reached four stars so that's uh I'll, that's about it um, for that and then i had maybe a couple others that got to a three and a half that were new i guess i'll just plug bros really quick because hopefully we'll be able to get to a review of that one and nobody's seeing it right now which yeah. sucks uh because i think it's a very good comedy so uh if we don't end up getting to that then this is at least the moment where i can tell people like <laughs> go see bros it's a good go comedy movie directed by the same guy that did uh forgetting sarah marshall okay so Solid. yeah yeah Solid. definitely it, it was a very good time Okay. Uh, a quick note for you. Uh, you did just pause for me a little bit, so we might lose some audio. So maybe this will be well, one of our... Well, you paused for me too, so yeah. I don't know which one of us is going to... New technical problems. Hooray. Yeah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> but you're back now. Um, so we'll move on to our best rewatch of the month, uh, and I'll start. Um, I have two here, um, and one of them I feel, I feel guilty about liking. Not guilty, but I feel <laughs> like I've seen it. I've seen it a few times and I know it, like I like it. It's good. I like the storyline, but there's just I think some of the acting in it bothers me. Like I I'm not a huge 
not I'm not not a fan of this of this actress, but in this movie, I think the casting was bad, and I don't think it should have been her. But I'm talking about Days of Future Past, um, the next oh. movie from from a while back. I don't think Jennifer Lawrence is very good in this movie, and I don't think she was a good choice for um, for Mystique in in this one. First class, fine, but in this one, I I just I get so like bored by her just being like I'm gonna kill this guy and then like running away and like I it's a great storyline I think the other acting is fantastic uh, adding in the old um, the old X Men the original X Men uh, with the storyline and and the time travel stuff is done very well I just that's the one weak point for me but uh, I do really like I do really like uh, that movie um, and I have to see Apocalypse again because I've seen it before but. Uh, that's well, the end of the trilogy, I believe. Apocalypse really fell off a cliff for me. I'm I sure think. it. I'm sure it did. I don't really remember it, which is why I want to watch it again. Yeah. Uh, so, but I know that's like the end of the trilogy, uh, or that that X Men trilogy. So they made a fourth try- one with that. Group. Yeah, Dark Dark Phoenix was it? Yeah, which is okay, supposed yeah. to be a train wreck. I haven't that's seen the that one one. with Sophie Turner that I heard I like absolutely wrecked and was just awful. I don't know what the I or the um. Rotten Tomato scores off the top of my head, but I remember it being like, oh, I think it's in like the looked. 20s or something. Yeah, it's, it's low. And yeah, but I, mean, I like Days of Future Past a lot, too. I like First Class as well. I think like both sets of X-Men movies for me, it's like I like one. I like two a lot. And then three is just like they just lose it entirely. But yeah, I like Days just... of Future Past quite a bit. So glad to see you pull this one up on the best rewatch. I did yeah. see that you watched that and I kind of forgotten about it. But uh yeah. So I'm, 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 we're slowly going through a couple, I, we just finished like a couple shows. So now we're actually trying to get back into some movie watching, which, you know, yeah. we oscillate between those two things and shows always take up way more time, especially when they're an hour long right. episode, you watch two or three of those a night and you're like, Oh shoot, it's already 10 o'clock. Got to go to bed yep. or whatever. So exactly. Exactly. So you have a ton of time. Uh, but then my other one, uh, we watched this together actually beginning of the month. We went over to a buddy's place and watched it. Um, this is avatar. Yeah. Now, I I gave this movie a square three. So best is a is a relative term here. But I was just shocked because this is the first time I've seen Avatar in eight years, nine years. It's been a long time. Um, and I was just struck by how good it still looked. Now it's supposed to because it was made in like 2010 with the biggest budget in the world. Um, so it better look good. But it's, again, CGI, which ages very differently than i feel like most movies i mean we've made a ton of advances in cgi at this point so i agree i mean we can i have this in my miscellaneous category but we can just talk about avatar now yeah because i had never seen it before which was brought up i don't know in like january or something when we did an episode our confessions episode where we confessed to five popular movies that we had never seen yeah uh and i had never seen avatar and so we finally watched that on our buddies like he got a big he got a projector with like a huge uh screen on the with the, the wall big, the wall yeah not screen but it's yeah the way he, yeah, he has threw it on, he just threw it on like the big wall in his basement right i was just yeah. saying it it gave a very large picture is what i was mm-hmm. trying to get to oh yeah but uh i definitely i thought it was good i didn't think it was great yeah i watched it thinking okay the story's fine i can see why this was visually stunning at the time mm-hmm. and i generally enjoyed myself i definitely felt though that the people who went and saw this thing like seven times in the movie theaters are fucking insane (laughs) i there was nothing in this movie that made me feel like this is something i'm gonna a need to maybe ever watch again but b (laughs) like there's a level to a movie that it needs to get like i i know this happens i mean it happened with the dark knight where there were people mm-hmm. that went to that movie over and over and over and like end game, same thing, or even infinity war kind of both of those had that, that moment. And I know a lot of people had this with uh Spider-Man, no way home as well. Yep. And there've been some yep. star Wars movies that people have just gone to over and over and over again. But I do not understand how somebody could go see this movie like five to 10 times over the course of like two months in the movie theater. And so this is where I, I agree with you to a point. Um, the only way I can like rationalize it or explain it to myself is a, this was like the, the newest and first version of 3d 
that we'd ever seen. And apparently sure. it was phenomenal. I like, a lot did. of people saw an IMAX. I didn't see it in 3D. Um, I know it's being re-released soon or it's already doing that. Uh, and they're Just releasing it in 3D. So like, I want to go see that in 3D just to be like, okay, this is what that hype was about and just try to understand that. But I think that's a large portion of it. That was I had also, forgotten about the 3D element. Yeah, it was also just so Still. colorful and, and that type of, wow, an, an alien planet. We were just kind of starting to kick off what I think in the last decade was a bigger um, focus on sci-fi uh, or humanity getting out of, like getting away from earth type stories. Well, I think now with we've, we've CGI a getting, lot of those, but I think with CGI like, getting good enough, then people are like, Oh, we can make these like off planet movies more. Way easier. And I will say too, I mean, with the 3d, I can see wanting to see this in the theater, like a couple times. I still think like the five to 10 is insane. Yeah. Uh, but also, I mean, I thought it was good. I gave it three stars. I enjoyed myself with it. I didn't think it was amazing or anything, but I thought it was mm -hmm. a good movie. And I do think, though, that it's really I like that the movie did as well as it did because it's an original science fiction story that doesn't pull from an existing yeah, like comic or book, which is mm -hmm. rare. I mean, like it's Very. kind of the same thing where I don't like the movie Interstellar, but I like that it did as well as it did because same. it's really hard to get movies like that made. And so it's cool that Avatar did that well. I don't like yeah. begrudge it anything. There are movies that have done very well that I thought were terrible that I thought like, why are people spending money on this thing? That's not how I feel about Avatar at all. Uh, yeah. I'm glad it's, it made as much money as it did, but it's, it's funny too. The movies yeah, you put up, it put it up against like, uh, or that you mentioned with it, like Endgame and star Wars and stuff like these are like the biggest summer blockbusters with a lot of CGI and a lot of cool action sequences yeah. with like a, just visually stunning movies. So that would make sense why it was, uh, I mean, A in 3D, which helps, uh, but why it made over a billion dollars. And, you know, it, it's in that right set of, or those are all the same same set of movies, essentially, uh, same type of thing. Uh, the right. last thing I'm going to say about it before we move on is the only thing I noticed that didn't really hold up was the first monster they they uh, encounter. It's like yeah. a, a panther type creature. Um, with extra tendrils and stuff on it. And it just looks a little shiny. It looks a little not finished, um, the model for it. And that's the only part visually that I was like, that stands out. And that was it for a movie that's 11 years old. I thought that was amazing. So, um, yeah, that's on my, my best rewatch. So what about you? So we're going to keep living in this category for a little while here because I have sort of a big chunk of movies that I wanted to mention. Okay. So I mentioned before that I had been having a very rough, movie watching month where like a lot of old classics that I gave like twos or two and a halfs to that were just not great for me. And it was just really feeling like a slog and a lot of things I didn't like very much, which I will bring up in our next category. But then I went and saw bros last Friday, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And then okay. after that, I went home and was still kind of in the mood to keep watching comedies, which I hadn't done for a while. And so I watched, I rewatched neighbors Okay, which Solid. I like that movie. I think that movie is like way underrated. And then it's pretty fun. Um, it has like bad ratings from audiences on like Letterboxd and Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't get it at all. Really? I think it's one of Seth Rogen's best movies. Um, and then I realized that it was the same director for Bros and Neighbors, uh, Nicholas Stoller. Okay. And so then I looked up what else Nicholas Stoller had made. And saw that he had also done Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Mm -hmm. So then right after I finished Neighbors, I rewatched Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which is a great comedy. Fantastic. So movie. last Friday, I watched Bros, Neighbors, and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Nice. And that led to like a whole comedy weekend for me, where then on Saturday, I rewatched This is the End and Neighbors 2. Okay, I haven't seen Neighbors 2, but I've seen This is the End. So Neighbors 2 is good. <laughs> it's not. I don't like it as much as the first one, but it's better than most comedy sequels, I think. Okay. That's, I mean, that's a strong endorsement, right? Yeah. Um, and then on Sunday, I rewatched Blockers. Oh, okay. You've mentioned that before. I haven't, I haven't gotten to that, but I know you like that. I love this movie, and it's got like audiences do not like it either. Like it's got like a fifty percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and I have no Ooh. idea why. Oof. It's the same type of movie as movies that do very well with audiences generally yeah but it's 
like actually smarter, but it's still got the same stupid. It's got a couple slob humor scenes in it, but it's a really smart story about three parents who realize that their daughters have made a pact to lose their virginities on prom night. <laughs> so they panic and they run off and they try to stop them. <laughs> it's pretty solid. And the parents are played by Leslie Mann, John Cena and Ike Barinholtz. And their, th their three daughters are best friends. <laughs> and it's, just, I just love this movie. It's such a great comedy. And I don't understand why this doesn't get talked about more. It's one of my favorite comedies of the last 10 years. And yeah, I know that was a lot of rewatches. I mean, in, I would say I have three of those movies as four star movies. Okay. Uh, in order, probably being Forgetting Sarah Marshall, I think, is the best of that bunch. And then Blockers and Neighbors, I all have as four-star movies. I have This is the End as a three and a half. And then uh, Neighbors 2 as a three. So Okay. That's pretty, that's I had pretty a, solid. And then for comedies, yeah. that's really good, right? Like, most for comedies sure. don't have, rise to the level of being like, this is the best movie I've seen in the entire year. So Right. But uh, I had a very fun movie watching weekend with all those comedy movies. And it was definitely of an era, like between Forgetting oh, for Sarah sure. Marshall and Blockers. I think they were all between 08 and 2018. And then Bros was from this year. So, yeah. But yeah, those are my kind of all my best rewatches. So, yeah, very good comedy weekend for me. Kind of pulled I... me out of a movie rut, too. So hopefully we can. That's good. Keep have that momentum. momentum. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, great minds think alike. Uh, right. <laughs> good, good. Uh, I like that. Um, I I love forgetting Sir Marshall, and I quote that to this day. So yeah, great choice there. for sure. Um, so now we'll move on to our duds, dud or duds of the month. Um, yeah, I only have one. Good, because um, I have three. Okay, uh, I'll make mine quick. Because uh, mine's not. It's not much of like a. I wouldn't call this. This isn't like a bad movie. I didn't. I didn't see this and go like, wow, this sucked. Uh, but it was a movie I was just slightly disappointed with, and it's another one that sure. we actually had an episode about. So this was uh, Breaking, and I mentioned John Boyega earlier. Oh, okay. The Woman King. Um, just higher expectations, maybe? Just higher expectations. That's all this movie suffered from for me. Like, it was fine, all things considered. Uh, it's also, like, based on a true story, which makes it more depressing and sad, which doesn't always make it... I would. It makes it good, but it makes it and it heartfelt, but you might walk away from that movie going like, oh, well, I don't sure. want to see that again. So that's that's disappointing. But uh, Michael right. Kenneth Williams, last role, uh, good, but too little of him, I think. Um, and John Boyega did a great job being kind of unhinged, but still sort of keeping it together. But there's just a lot of there's a lot of just space in that movie for things to happen and nothing really does. Sure. Um, and that may be how it actually went down, but that doesn't make it always the most interesting thing. It was just, again, it's not a bad movie. I think I gave it a three, um, yeah. three and a half, maybe. I could look it up, but uh, whatever. Um, it's just it was just a little bit of a of a disappointment, but that's all I had. It was just breaking. Sure. So, so I've got three old movies that are <laughs> highly regarded. respected and regarded okay. and loved. Okay. <laughs> that I gave two and a halfs to all of these. Two and a half has kind of become my score for like classics that I don't really like, but I can kind of respect the craft. Okay, and I think that's fair. Like, I, I respect that it did all of these things or it was revolutionary for its time, but it's not my thing. Right. That's okay. Kind of, we're, as, and on our scale, that's kind of like, it's okay yeah. overall, but I didn't necessarily enjoy myself with it. And those were, so the three of them were uh, Raging Bull. Whoa. The Hustler. Okay. And the original Dawn of the Dead. Okay. I can see, I, I, I can see the original Dawn of the Dead um it's been a long time since i've seen that i but don't I understand see that. why that movie is like constantly thrown up with like some of the best horror movies ever made and i say that i love night of the living dead i think that movie is fantastic and then he did dawn of the dead in color in a mall like 10 years later and i thought this movie was just really dull and kind of corny and not scary at all or even like not even like scary, but like not even like tense ever, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, and then the hustler great first 30 minutes. And then it was just a complete slog for me after that. And it's like two hours and 15 or 20 minutes or something, I think. So okay. that one was uh, was problematic. And then really Raging Bull was the one that surprised me the most. 
because I love Scorsese. I mean, De Niro and Joe Pesci are in it, and it's one of the best reviewed movies ever. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the AFI top 10. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jay took it first in our sports movie draft. A little spoiler if you haven't seen that episode yet. But uh, mostly for me, and this movie is technically brilliant. The acting's amazing. But I, at this point, I have no patience or interest patience for a character like this or like interest in a movie. That's just about a guy being a dick. Okay. Like he's a boxer and he's an asshole to everybody in his life. <laughs> he, he just treats everybody like complete garbage, especially his wife. And it's just, I don't understand why this even needed to be made. Like what the character study even is. Yeah, about like somebody like it's like oh, this angry guy is a prick. Like it, it, that's not interesting to me. I know I'm way in the minority on this, but there wasn't. It, it's different to me than something like a mob movie or like Goodfellas, where like they're part of this entire world that has like completely different codes and values than what most of us live in and what society has deemed acceptable. But they're in this little bubble. Mm -hmm. And they're not always there by choice. And sometimes it's desperation. Sometimes it's family. And I find that stuff interesting. Okay. This is just a guy who's a really good boxer. And I don't know. I mean, I guess you can look at it as like, he's taking his, like the violence and the aggression and the anger from his profession out of that and into his life with him. But okay. There's nothing in there that says like, he needs to be a dick. And it's just like two hours and I don't know, 10 two hours and eight minutes minutes of <laughs> De Niro just being an asshole. And I don't find that interesting really in any way. So that was huh. it. So it wasn't like it, it was one of those movies to me that once they started making it, everything is very well done. I just don't think it's a story that needed to be told at all. Gotcha. Okay. So. Well, I, that's the that's one of the more famous movies I've never seen. So yeah. I got to get to that. And I'd love to talk about that at some point. When I, I mean, Dylan it. loves it, I think. So okay. and Jay so loves it. So deciding. But yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Like I, like I said, I'm way in the minority on this. So I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. And maybe it was part that's of fair. just maybe it just fed off of other movies that had already kind of disappointed me. And it was long and I was just mm -hmm. already kind of in the mood to just be disappointed again. I don't know. But I definitely won't be revisiting it. That's unfortunate. I mean, not unfortunate, but it is. Yeah. It is what it is. It, yeah. You know, so it's a bummer. I didn't like it. I was expecting to. Yeah, that's interesting though. That's a. That's. It's kind of. It's kind of fun when there's a a big movie that everyone loves that you just like. It's not my thing. It's like yeah. you're those people are obviously out there on every single movie, but like it's just For sure. Uh, it doesn't hit you right, or if it doesn't hit you at the time, it doesn't. You don't feel like you're ever going to get connected to it. So why even revisit? Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, there are like a million movies out there. So just, yeah. So just move on. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. My well, watch it's... list continues to grow at a faster rate <laughs> than I can watch them. So I don't need to rewatch Raging Bull. Okay. Okay. Well, in the spirit of moving on, uh, we are going to move to our last uh, category, our miscellaneous or the just got to talk about category. Um, so I will start. <sighs> I originally had written down that I wanted to talk a little bit more about don't worry darling but okay. all I really cared about was on our episode it's that we did a spoiler episode we talked a little bit we had to make mention of all the drama and shit surrounding this movie yeah. uh I don't know I can't make heads or tails of why drama started who it's between or for what reasons doesn't really matter doesn't make any just know that sense. It is. You just know that it happened and yeah. whatever people it's, it, it sounds like catty actors being catty actors is what it sounds like. Um, but that's whatever. So what I do want to talk about, and I know I brought this up last roundup because it was the first time I had seen it. I would like to talk about very briefly, everything, everywhere, all at once. And I okay. know that you guys didn't like it, but I went over to a friend's house uh, and watched it with a couple people last week uh, with, uh, it was four people total five people total um two of them had not seen it 
And as soon as it was over, I mean, there's a there's a section in that movie where there's like a dialogue happening and like a, a very serious, tense moment. And everybody, it was just a group of buddies, was just fucking silent, like wait, like letting it play out and like really feeling the gravity yep. of the moment. Um, and then we got done and we obviously we all laughed a shitload through it. The hot dog fingers and amongst other funny yeah. lines and things of that nature. Um, the two guys who hadn't seen it just stopped and were like, that was incredible. I really liked it. And most people think that. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's my favorite movie of the year, but I did consider bumping it up from what I have it as a four star movie to a four and a half after this viewing, because now that I have a more streamlined view of the movie and I know what's happening, or at least I know what kind yeah. of ridiculous stuff is going to get thrown at me. I was a little bit more accepting of, OK, get me the storyline and let me like feel how that how hard that hits me as opposed to mm -hmm. like how weird and zany and crazy this is going to be. Um, so I think those two things have a very good balance and they mesh well, but I was more interested in the story this time around. And I think the story absolutely holds up. So yeah, I mean, I would, I would say to you and Dylan, give it a chance, maybe watch it with a couple of people, give it a chance again and just see how it hits you. You, you might not like it still, but. Oh, I've you know. considered rewatching it many times. If it was free somewhere, I probably would have by now, mm, but I fair. think you can only like pay to rent it. And just at yeah, this point. Rented. Because of every all the other stuff we have to watch, if it shows up free somewhere, I will give it a rewatch for sure. Okay. But I'm glad you liked. I mean, when we finished it, I left the theater <laughs> not really knowing how I felt at the time, and then thinking about it more. And it, there were some things in there that just didn't quite sit with me that mm -hmm. I that I could be far that I can articulate far better now than in the episode that we did. Cause a okay. lot of the episode was Dylan and I just sort of talking about like, it just didn't feel right. And like, why yeah. was that? <laughs> and we don't necessarily Hype around it and all that. We stuff, don't necessarily like... articulate our issues with it that well. Um, but I did almost instantly think like, Adam's really going to like this movie, <laughs> which is funny. Cause it's made by the people who made death of Dick long. And I did not like death of Dick long. Right. Dylan and I really enjoyed that one. Have you seen Swiss Army Man? Yes, I've seen Swiss Army Man. It's ridiculous and great. I love Swiss Army Man. <laughs> I, so like... I think that movie is brilliant. And this one, I mean, the long and short of it for people who haven't listened to that episode and without spoiling anything, the last kind of 20, 30 minutes of the movie just felt like too much to me. Like That's there were fair. too many things going on and it pulled me away from the things that I thought should still be there. And it kind of watered it down for me. It, and I was just exhausted when the movie was over. Yeah, it definitely slows down a little bit towards the end and it, and it does lose some of that like kind of crazy momentum that it had built. So that's fair. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I, and that's not getting into specifics or anything. No, and that's no. not going to make sense to you if you haven't seen the movie, obviously. But I don't want to spoil anything for people. Yeah, me either. People, everyone should see this movie. It is a true original in a time of just franchises and remakes. And for that alone, it should be celebrated. Yes. hundred percent. And also Michelle Yeoh is amazing. So see it just for those two reasons, at least. And because everybody else, except for me basically seems to love it. So <laughs> don't take my word on how good the movie is apparently, but uh, I'm still recommending people go see it anyway. That's kind of, it's one of those weird ones where I feel like more not for me than like, bad i don't know it's yeah kind of a strange that's feeling. fair that's fair uh but, and uh, i know i shouted this out when we had, when we did the episode but i am going to shout out stephanie sue uh who is who plays joy uh jamie lee curtis is in this movie and weird and then uh key yeah key hoi kwan who um this is his first acting role in 20 years uh again i just crushed it so uh that's it but go see that movie or try to find it rent it do what you need to yep so I was going to talk about Avatar in my miscellaneous section. We brought that up already. So then just really quick, I rewatched Rogue One. Oh, which, nice. Okay. Which I think hands down the best Star Wars movie since the original trilogy. Oh, yeah. I, no complaints here. I mean, it's just such a good standalone. This is exactly what a prequel should be. It's exactly what like a in-universe movie should be. Well, right, but I mean, like, it works on so many different levels. It just works as, like, what a standalone Star Wars movie should feel like. It works because we get so many prequels now. That's kind of, like, one of the new big things that we like yep. to jump back in time and see before. Let's tell the story we made the mythos about. Right. Um, because, I mean, it's you get the same, probably, cash grab or, like, box office as a sequel, but you don't risk ruining the ending. 
Yeah. So I think that's a big reason why prequels are so popular. And this one is like textbook how to do one because it doesn't have any of the same characters except for like Darth Vader. Yeah, say Vader shows up, but like whatever. Like yeah, that's a I great say, that's a great lead into like what the original trilogy is, which is exactly. also another reason. It's like, hey, it's right here. The end it's like, right there. He's <laughs> just mowing down rebel troops for like 30 seconds is maybe the best scene in Star Wars history. It's unfortunate that we have never gotten a scene of that magnitude uh with Darth Vader yet, because he is probably the most iconic villain in anything of all time. Yeah. Like any media. It's Darth it's Darth Vader. And in the original trilogy, obviously, because of the constraints of their time, it's not like you don't see like a hardcore badass just doing some stuff. And even in like when he's Anakin in the prequel trilogy, he's not he's Darth doing, Vader, though. He's not doing Darth Vader, but he's doing cool stuff. But like right. this is Darth Vader at his most extreme, most deadly, most I don't give a fuck. I'm killing everybody. Yeah. Without remorse. And it's just the coolest scene. It's 30 seconds. Like it's, it's such a great lead in to the original trilogy. And it works so well because you could see it without having seen the original trilogy because all the characters are different. Mm -hmm. And I love spoilers that they like because it's owned by Disney. I was shocked that they actually made the decision to let everybody die at the end. Yeah. Which yeah. is the only way it could have ended. But I was like, as I was watching the movie for the first time in theaters, I was thinking like, like they need to kill all these people, but are they going to do it? Yeah, like how how are they how are they gonna magic everybody out of here? How to, out of this one? Like or like are they gonna just have to do this weird thing where a couple of them survive and then they just act like oh they just like stayed in hiding for the original like yeah that and would like, just we be never stupid. saw them again they were big rebels and then disappeared forever and then like, maybe try to have them show up in like season three of the Mandalorian yeah which will be like but um, right also because Star Wars into, loves retconning stuff. Well, especially because when Disney bought all the Star Wars stuff, they're like, oh, you know, all these like expanding universe stories and like books that have been written in comics and all this stuff. Yeah. Toss all of that. We're going to make our own. And it's like, except now mm. because everybody hates that new trilogy. It sounds like they're very open to maybe just doing good. Like some of the stuff that people like from the books. We had 40 years basically like the to Thrawn write expanded trip. universe stuff. And th th it's just free. It's free. It's out there just to use, to make great stories and have people love. Like it's, uh, I've been reading some rumors that they might do the Thrawn trilogy, which I would actually be really excited about just because I've heard amazing things from people mm -hmm. who've read them. So yeah, that was, I wanted to bring that one up. That felt like a good one because the new uh, Andor series just started on Disney plus, which I've not say. started yet, but that's why I rewatched this because I'm actually interested in that. Yeah. I've kind of said like everything and this is, exactly what i mentioned about like the benefit of doing a prequel instead of a sequel is that it can't ruin the ending yeah i have basically no interest in anything star wars that takes place after the end of return of the jedi yeah those those the, the last trilogy is worth seeing but not worth putting any stock in well right and so this though like all the rebellion stuff like between the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy i think that's like a gold mine <laughs> Yes. For Star Wars stories. Because yes. you get like a 20 year, like the world was just like this. And then the rebellion starts and we haven't. And so that's why I'm also interested in kind of like some of the animated shows, like the Clone Wars and then like the Rebels ones and stuff. So yep. I might explore those a little bit more. But yeah, just wanted to mention Rogue One. Best great Star choice. Wars movie since the trilogy. So great choice. Yeah. Is that, is that the only one you had for miscellaneous then? That's all I had. I being... Okay. Yeah. That's that's a solid list, and I think this is a really good uh, little roundup we had. I mean, yeah, I, I'll talk about Star Wars till the cows come home. Not not being like <laughs> the biggest fan, but like being interested in it uh, to a certain right. degree. Having buying all the lightsaber toys and stuff, and for sure, uh, we went to Disney this year. We went to the Star Wars area at Disney in Florida, and it's fucking insane. And I highly recommend any Star Wars fan get I, there. It's so cool. It's I did want to bring this up. So cool. I thought of this as I was watching Rogue One. One thing that I sort of get a kick out of with Star Wars movies is how within like every individual movie, it's like there's some written thing where they're not allowed to go to two planets that look alike <laughs> in the same movie. You can yeah. have like like different planets that look alike in one movie and another movie. Yeah. But every like every planet in Rogue One, I mean, they start off and it's kind of like where she's living, where it's like sort of green and just like open. Mm -hmm. 
and then like where the Jedi like temple or something was where they're getting the crystals. Yeah, that's like sort of another deserty kind of planet or like kind of, you know, like rock. It's very dry. Yep. And then they go to the planet with like the base that her dad is on, which is just like rock and rain yep. in like, the <laughs> mountains. And then the final battle takes place on the planet that's like on a beach with the ocean. Yep. Which was a great decision to have it there. I thought that was really cool. But I was I noticed that as I watched this, I was like, there's never two planets that look the same in the same movie. Well, they just don't want to confuse people, which I think is hilarious because like that's a that's a solid reason. But I always find it funny too, where it's like it doesn't feel like there are even that many more people than there are on Earth. Yeah. It's just like a planet is just like a city. Yeah. We only because, see one spot of those planets typically. Right. That's what I mean. Like they just land there and then there's like a little settlement with like 40 people in it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go to some different planet and it's like, why can't you all like live closer? I don't know. It's weird. It, I, I mean, shouldn't think too much about it, but I kind of <laughs> do because it's a little ridiculous. Well, because it, it's ridiculous and like you start thinking like, okay, well, how could you expand this into other things or how, why? what makes this make sense or whatever? You start to like literally build the, the universe in your own mind, which is what great storytelling should do. Uh, and it should do that for you a little bit to give you like structure to do that within, which is why so much expanded universe stuff got written by fans post Star Wars. But you get carried away so quickly that you're like, well, it should just be easier than this. Like we're in one yeah. galaxy, right? Like. Granted, that's very large. It's not like we're in one solar system, but I will say though, I think that's where the the prequel trilogy has the edge over all of it, and that's in the world building and having sure. it feel like it's lived in, and there's some type of societal structure that I can understand, and the stakes yes. feel bigger. Yes. It's got, I mean, it's got like very wooden acting and like stiff dialogue, and there are a lot Terrible of things wrong dialogue. with the prequel trilogy. But from the from that perspective, that's why I can rewatch those because I feel like it's the only place where I actually there are actually like stakes that affect people. Yeah, you know because you see some planets with like people on them that are like, "Hey, don't kill us!" <laughs> and, like that's more than you it's more get. than Alderaan got. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like all the other ones are just like whoever's involved in the fight, and the galaxy is always at stake, but we never yeah. see the galaxy. But I don't know the galaxy, so let it right. Like, yeah, <laughs> let it rock. like that's why the first one, at least, like I know some people hate that movie, but like you actually feel like, oh, they might like destroy this planet that the Naboo live on, and they're like people here. Yeah, that matter. And they're gonna, and yeah, yeah, and it's gonna, it, and it matters to like the structure, the the I was gonna say global, the uh, universe wide. I don't know if what the term would be for that, but it matters to like the, the republic. It matters yeah. to the governing body of all of those planets, and you're like, oh right. shit. This there will be ramifications. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't that yeah. I don't know. That was a yeah, interesting Star Wars discussion to wrap this up. But uh it is. I like getting off on some tangents. We do it yeah. every so often. For sure. Um well uh I think that's all we had for this episode. So and I think it's uh it's actually your turn to take us out. It is my turn to take us out if you wanna yeah. hit the uh if you wanna wrap it up as I as I read us out of the episode here. Yeah, take it away. It's better to wait for something than settle for reality and spoil all your hopes.